Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to be talking about antiquing gold. Uh, so basically what we're going to look at is making a green gold that has been exposed to some kind of mitigating environmental element that has added a green tinge to it. Um, this same technique could also be done to create strong reflections in your gold um, to produce a sort of chromatic or color shift effect. The things we're going to talk about today will do all of that. Uh, so here I have my Gorgon uh, from my uh, Malusi, my Blood Sisters. She's all she's almost done except for the gold. And here is another one in the unit right here where we've already completed this effect. So you can see, sorry, there we go. You can see how we've got the green tinge and shadowing uh, on the gold. Let's look at this one. I think you get a clear image. There you go. That one's a little better as you can see the in this area here. So we're going to follow a lot of the same principles as we do with doing non-metallic metal, but instead of creating true shadows, we're going to create color to make the gold more interesting and to push it through a color shift. Okay, so what we're going to use for that is, well, first of all, we've got some Vallejo metal color gold and silver. Um, we've got some scale 75 ink tense green, and then we've got some Dalarowney FW Paints Gray, which if you watch me regularly, you know is one of my favorite and most multi-purpose of colors. So we're gonna go ahead and just use a dry palette for this one because we're dealing with metallic paints. Um, the base layer I put on there was just uh, the gold with a tiny, tiny touch of copper uh, in it, just so uh, I had something to to, to create a little bit of color variation. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get some of this ink out on our palette here. I'm gonna start with just the gold and the green and we'll go from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some of this green ink in my brush. Okay. And then most importantly, whenever you're painting with inks, it's very, 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 very important that you wick off your excess, right? So we're just taking that and we're touching it until we don't get that run out, you know, sort of spill effect anymore. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start laying some of that into the shadows. Some of them are fairly obvious. So for example, here on the underside of her armor on her chest, This is gonna help create basically contrast in the gold. I'm also gonna put some up top here because the gold would tend to be shadowed at the top. Um, so flat surfaces, which her, her chest plate is basically a flat surface, it's a side of a square. Flat surfaces when exposed to light, the light will tend to spill down them and this point right here would be the, uh, would be the catch. So we'll create that with our light later. Uh, we can do our face mask, so obviously we're going to get the undersides of the snakes where they would be uh, sheltered from the light. We'll get the underside of that. So what we want to do is we're just, we're not washing this, okay? We do not want to wash the gold. The problem with washing gold is that the second you put a wash on there, sorry, my finger was up. The second you put a wash on there, you kill the metallic property. You might as well just have not even used metal paint because all you do is destroy the natural sheen of the metal. So instead we wanna be a lot more controlled with it. We wanna make sure we're putting it into the areas where we want the dark color to be, right? You can see there the green on her face. So, I'm just laying it into everywhere where there would be naturally occurring shadows, tracing down recess lines that would basically hide the light, that sort of thing. 
When it comes to little elements like this, there's this little green thing or this little gold piece here on her staff. You can just touch it in a little location to create a little shadow. It doesn't need to be perfect. When we have bigger areas like this here on her, I don't know, whatever this would be, this tabard thing, whatever this is, we're gonna just push the color up toward the top and make sure we get it along the lines. So you can see there, she's got that line in between the two plates. We wanna make sure that's nice and, and called out and highlighted. Same with underneath here and same with on the top right here. We just want a line, but we're not gonna stop here. So one of the nice parts about this is that we can be a little messy. We don't have to be perfect because we're gonna clean this all up later. The challenge with, one of the challenges with inks over metal paint is that it doesn't tend to stick super well, um, which can actually be an advantage for us in this case, because if we make a mistake, we can just smudge it out real quick. But in general, uh, metallic paint, because if it's put on very smoothly, it doesn't have a place for the, the ink to really grip um, and soak into. The, your normal pigment and medium, the ink can actually soak into the paint a lot easier because the pigment itself can, the uh, ink can flow between it much easier. Your metal paint tends to be a combination of slightly larger pigment and also metal. Like the pigment itself is made of metal. And I'm not sure you may be aware of this, but metal itself is not a super absorptive, uh, absorb, absorb, doesn't absorb stuff very well. I don't know what the word is for that, but you know what I'm getting at here. So I'm going to get these little creases in here. Basically, make sure we darken up near the top. Over here on her back. All right, well, I know it's hidden by her hair, sorry. Just get that one there. See, she has this little van brace on her arm. We want to make sure we get under there. Basically, anything that would normally be in shadow or anything that would directly be reflecting green. So if it's, if it's something pointed directly at a green object. Other than that, we more or less follow the rules for highlighting non-metallic metal. So we think about this in the same way. Because that's what we're doing. We're duplicating a sort of non-metallic metal effect, but with a very different set of colors. So what we get right now after our first ink is something like that, which is already, I think, more interesting, because now we've got some transition. One of the problems I see with people when they do metal paint and then they don't go any farther, or if you just do a simple wash or something like that, is that things like this hair, where I've put so much contrast into it, right? The metal ends up being less reflective and less visually interesting. The bright, shiny, highly reflective metal ends up being less visually interesting than the hair. And we want to make sure this pops more. Okay, so now we're going to get some of our dark blue uh, ink. This is a, this Dalarani Payne's Gray. It's a very blue-black. Get some of that on our palette. And then what I'm going to do is take a nice brush full of that green, put it over here, maybe a couple. And I'm going to grab my Payne's Gray and mix it in there. Now, it's much stronger. This ink is much stronger than this ink. This is artist grade ink. So it's far more heavily pigmented. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna reinforce all our deepest shadows. So here under the snakes, down here in this area, up right under the cheek and in this crease, deepest part of the ear, right under the brow line on this mask. Okay, so we're just pushing those shadows. Here under the chest, we want a nice deep recess. We want that to fall back. The key with adding these extra touches is it also enhances your contrast. It makes those areas pop out. Here on this side where we've got this line in between these two, I wanna make sure I get a nice line of that there. 
as well as in between the two. Bring a little up toward the top, there on the side. We're not letting this ever pool, okay? We have to be very controlled and careful with this ink. If we get extra, we wipe it off. All right, so what we get is something like that. But we wanna make sure all of our connection points have a nice dark line between them to capture the shadow. Okay. Maybe a little bit on the bottom of the horn there where it's really deep in shadow. Maybe a little bit in between here. Okay. So now that we've set some really nice deep shadows, our next step is to make sure we get control of the light and pop out our highlights. For that, we're gonna use pure silver. Just straight up pure silver. Um, I've seen some people talk about not highlighting gold with silver. Uh, I disagree. Uh, and the, some of those people, by the way, are previous me. Um, I used to have a strong belief that you didn't want to highlight gold with pure silver. I have changed my mind on that. See, so we can change our minds. Uh, because what I want to do is really push those highlights. So I'm going to make sure I don't have a lot of extra paint, but then what I'm going to do is hit the tops of the snakes. Vallejo Metal Color also makes this easy, as it's relatively simple to control. And it's gonna really let that gold shine through while still giving me that nice silver sheen. You can see already, see how much that pops out right there on her head where we've got that bright reflection point? Same thing here, we're gonna get her nose, we're gonna get the edges of her teeth, her chin. Think about it like all the normal places we would highlight, right? Because what I'm trying to do, I'm also gonna get edges so we're gonna edge highlight this just like we would with something that's non-metallic metal. So like these sharp lines on her horns right here. So you're gonna get some quick edge highlights there. We wanna make sure those edges really pop out. Same thing here on her shoulder, right here. We're going to put a little drop of silver on the highlight, but then we're also going to hit that edge. Same on the back side. Okay. I happened to forget this little arm and to shade it because I didn't notice it was gold, but that's okay. I can go back and hit the low lights on that. We'll push a little bit of the highlight up top there. Sorry. A little bit on that side. On the top, we'll get the edge of the uh, chest armor here. Right here. I'm not worrying about this, like, um, this rune that's carved in her chest. I'm not going to worry about that at this moment. We'll come back and get that later. A little bit on the corners here of each of the under armor so that those little bottom areas pop. And then the very lower parts down here. If you get a little bit of metal paint where you don't want it, like I just did, we grab a brush and just clean that up real quick. That happens. We're gonna go ahead and edge highlight this part up here. So that really pops out from the, uh, from the chest. Wanna get these edges. Maybe a little highlight there on the back side. And that's, there you go. Now we basically placed our silver. So now what you can see is it still looks gold, certainly. But now we've got these real strong highlights. So now we gotta bring it all together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some of my green ink, put it over here. Okay. 
Then I'm just gonna grab a touch of my gold paint and mix it up so I get that nice green glaze, maybe a little more. There we go. Okay. This is sort of a combination of the two techniques from my last video of the painting colored metallics. Um, this kind of combines both of them because I'm doing both the glazes and the colored metals. And then what I'm going to do is smooth the edge lines and sort of recontrol everything. Like where, right here, where you can see I've got green up in this area, but then the top of the horn just goes, I want to smooth that out with a little bit of the green gold. Okay. We'll do the same on the back side here. But effectively what I'm doing here is in all the places where I had a strong green shadow, I'm then gonna come in with my green gold and just very quickly put a little edge next to that. And the reason I do that is because I wanna smooth that transition. So for just that little area where there's both gonna be both ink and metallic paint together, it transitions from one into the other and basically tricks the eye into thinking that it's all the same. It's all the same stuff. It also it makes it a little easier to control because I've got the paint in there with the ink. Uh, the ink sticks a little better and the paint's a little thinner. It basically very quickly and easily turns into a glaze. So it becomes very simple for me to do a nice fade, like you can see right there on that piece and up here on the chest. Okay? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is take some of my just original gold paint. I'm going to get it out. This is tough to do with anything but the Vallejo metal color. I'll be completely honest this next step. I've touted Vallejo Metal Color like a hundred times. It's still true. It's as true as the first time I talked about it. It thins into a glaze so easy. And look at how thin that is. Which some people find challenging and they find it challenging because they don't then do this. That's it. If after you get into that metal paint you just touched your brush to a paper towel, your problems are solved. So now that I've got basically a thin glaze of this gold and I can test it on my hand and see, I'm then gonna come over that and fade the two together. And the advantage of this is I can go over some of the silver on the edges too. And the silver will still remain bright. But I can knock back a little of that I can knock back a little of that pure silver. So this is why I changed my mind, because I realized that it was such a nice way to get ultra bright edges in just a few places. And then I can come in with like a thin gold glaze and it'll just get so much richer of a shine. You'd be amazed at how much of a difference it makes. But I can work my way around and you see I'm just hitting those edges, those areas where we're transitioning between the two. So I can kind of fade that ink and make that transition between the two smoother. Okay. Now I can get, and then from this point, it's just cleanup. I can keep going back and forth. I can, you know, I can grab some of this uh, deeper color that I made while I've still got some of that metal paint in there. And I can very carefully reinforce what I want for some of my deepest shadows by keeping a little bit of that metal paint in there. I'll actually help reinforce the fact that it's metal in those deep places a little bit. And again, I'll make my shadows stick a little stronger. Can go back into my green ink, pull some of that out to a more intense gold or more intense green. And I can sort of 
mix around my shadows here just quickly a few touches to bring my dark color back to a few places basically it's no different than glazing back and forth with anything else you just kind of keep pushing it around until you're happy with where the color comes out and you feel like you've achieved something that looks nice basically all there is to it so I can get that nice shadow down there on the edge of that which you just I'm just gonna push it around until I like where I'm at. And that's basically all there is to it. It's a really quick, simple technique that I think applies a beautiful look to your model. Um, I'm doing it here, by the way, with these greens and blues. As usual, there's nothing particularly magical about my selection of colors or paints, um, other than I would say this is going to be very tough to do without the Vallejo metal color. Um, I would recommend a glossy ink. That's why I like the Scale 75, um, because it is a very high gloss ink. Um, if you're using something like a, like a GW Shade, it's not going to be, sorry, if I'm using like a GW Shade, it's not going to be quite as effective um, because it's just such a weaker effect overall. The pigment density is so much lower, and it just it doesn't really stick super well. To the metal. So I would recommend something like the Scale 75 inks or the Dollar Roundies. I think, as I've mentioned on other shows, I think they are worth picking up, especially if you're doing this task. But if you don't have them, that's okay. Any like Vallejo Game Ink will work. You, you generally want an ink, not just a shade. Although, if you're willing to put a couple more coats on or be careful, then the shade will also work. Don't feel like you can't do it if you don't happen to have those tools. You can still get some really cool effects. Um, sometimes the the gloss shade may be what you want to look at because that could sort of cut the difference pretty nicely. But uh, there we go. That's it. That's all there is to it. Just like that, we've got some nice chromatic metal that I think is much more visually interesting than where we were before. And most importantly, we've gained back control of the light. So for example, when I look at her like this, you can see how much more that green shows in the shadow, right? Whereas up top here, look at how silver, oops, sorry. Look at how silver she looks, right? So there you go. That's all there is to it. Like I said, it's a simple, quick, but very fun technique. I love it. I love the look it produces. Um, I'll post a, a link up here of all five of the, or I'll post a picture here at the end of the video of all five of the girls together so you can see what that looks like. Um, but there you go. That's doing some antique green gold. Uh, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, give it a like. Like I said, don't be afraid to play around with other colors with it. I'd love to see it done with like some reds and uh, some purples. I think you could do really cool stuff there too with warm gold. Uh, so, you know, play around with it. Give it a try. Uh, subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. Share this with someone if they're interested in working with some metallics and want to do some, something fun and different. Sharing is always the nicest thing you can do and deeply appreciated. If you've got suggestions for future hobby cheating videos, go ahead and drop those down below. Always love to see suggestions for future videos. Always try to produce videos that uh, people are going to find useful. But uh, as always, I appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time.